Yo, what is up guys? This is Afix and welcome to a new tutorial series that I'm really excited about. Now you may or may not have heard about the Epic Online Services, but no matter what, it is one of the best dev tools out there for multiplayer games in particular. There are no tutorials out there yet, so I guess I can say that I am the first person to make Epic Online Services tutorials. Um, and I feel I feel like when I was learning like how this type of stuff worked, I really wish I had my own tutorial. So that's why I am making this series. And I'm not I'm not completely um, like I don't completely understand EOS at the moment. So and just letting you know, EOS is Epic Online Services. And I don't completely understand it at the moment. So the series um, is not going to be like exact when or when I don't post videos. Uh, but my goal is to help you guys go in the right direction and kind of understand how these different subsystems work. Now, this video is not necessarily diving too deep into um, the, how to use the SDK with Unreal Engine. It's more how it works, what it does, and how to build the sampled projects. So, um, as you can see right here on my screen, I just have a fresh Google tab. Um, and let's first explain what EOS SDK really is. So I'm just going to go to the dev.epicgames website. So Epic Online Services is an online subsystem that allows for cross-play. Uh, you can see here they're open and modular. You can use it uh, with stuff like GameLift. Um, it does support cross-play, so you can play across um, Xbox, PS4, PC, all those different uh, device types. And then um, down here, you can see all the services that they have. So matchmaking, that's really useful. Lobbies are also really useful. Peer-to-peer -peer listen servers, basically. There are achievements. Um, if you want to have a game or like if you get a certain amount of something, then you get a special achievement. Stats, like how many kills a player has. Leaderboards, who has the most wins, something like that. Player data storage, I believe you could just store um, files in here. Game analytics. Uh, player ticketing, that's useful. It's like when Epic Games sends you an email with your two-factor authentication code. And title storage. So uh, as you can see, all these services are like really useful. It's like almost like the dream service. However, EOS is really difficult to use. And once again, that is why I wanted to make this series. So click on this dev portal button to go to your development portal. Note that if this is the first account, you will need two-factor authentication. So I will do this, you should do the same. And we'll be right back. So once you have finished your Epic Games two-factor authentication setup, click I have enabled 2FA. You will be redirected to your dev dashboard and you can customize your settings, like change the names here. I'm not gonna do that. So go up and click download SDK and under SDK version, just choose the SDK and click download. Um, you do have to review agreements. Um, and since this is my account for YouTube, I already have done the agreements. Make sure you read all through all these. They are very important and um, are important for you and your players to be successful in the future. Click accept once you have read all of the terms of service. And then under the SDK version, click SDK, SDK and click download. And it will prompt you to choose where to download. I will just download it in my D drive since I have no space on my C drive. We'll click save. So once this finishes downloading, you just click on it and you'll see these three files here. If you highlight all of them and you will need some type of extraction software. So I'm using WinRAR because it is free and it's just easy to use. You can also use 7-Zip, uh, but you do not have to use WinRAR. So highlight all three of these files. You could do click and shift and then click the bottom file to highlight all. Click extract to and extract wherever you want. Personally, I like creating a new folder just for Epic Online Services. So I'm just gonna call it EOS. 
Uh, and another useful thing is you could put a dot in front of it. I'm just going to do an underscore. It'll move it to the top of your file list. And I'll click enter and then click OK and it will extract to that certain file location. When you're done, click X. You may delete the zip file now. I am not going to do that. Now go to the area where you downloaded this file. So here you can see mine is at underscore EOS. And here you have the SDK. So you can see the SDK has inside of it a binary folder, include library and tools folder. You will not be messing with any of these yet. And if you go into the includes, you can see these are all the different programs that allow us to use these services. Now let's go back to our EOS folder and click on double click on samples and double click on this samples SLN file. Now this will open up in Visual Studio and note you do have to have Visual and Studio installed. And um, if you are prompted with retarget projects, click OK. And if it says you are trying to edit read only files, do you want to mark these files as writable? Once again, click OK. And you will be prompted multiple times, once for each solution. So when you are finished with that, uh, we can start off with whichever one of these we want. Now I'm going to start off with player data storage. So to run these files, there are multiple steps required. So under samples in this file explorer, double click on the one you want to run. So I'm going to do player data storage. Double click on this build shell script and it will build these files. Then double click on this Windows batch file, assets to build, and then double click on the copy assets to builds and double click on copy assets to builds SDL. Once you are finished with that, you will go into the source file and you can see our source files already opened here. So we'll go to Visual Studio and we will open up the player data storage. We'll open up source and double click on sample constants h once you have and opened up your sample constants h file we will need to find these different strings in our dev portal so go to your dev portal into your project here when you go to product settings in general you will have your product id copy and paste it then go back and go into your environments and here's a list of sandboxes and copy and paste the live sandbox ID. Then go back to your dev portal and go to identity or not identity providers. We will go to this um, game services, matchmaking and copy this deployment ID. So here, go to the top and copy that and paste it into the deployment ID. Um, for client credentials ID, you will need to copy and paste, um, or actually besides copy and pasting, you will need to create a new client first. So go to product settings, clients. I have created one, I'm gonna delete it, remove it. And then I will click new client. And then the rule will be game client. You can call it whatever, I'm gonna call it test client one. And don't add anything in the redirect URL. Make sure all of these are selected and click save. Once this is complete, you will have a new client and you will see this is the client ID. So you can copy and paste that into the client credentials ID. And if you right, uh, if you click on these three little dots and you click client details, you can copy this secret key and paste it into the client credentials secret key. For the game name, just choose the same thing as your product name. Because I was using a different account and I'm signing to a different account now, I will change my details but keep your details um, and follow the steps that I had and they should be working. And note that if you copy my credentials, nothing will happen because you are not signed into my account and um, you will have to do these steps. The IDs are different for everybody. So let me fill out my data with my account information and I will be right back.
Okay, so I have collapsed my sample constant struct so you guys do not know this personal information that I've inputted. Once you are done, go over to the right, right click on the player data storage module and click build. You'll see it building on the bottom and once it has succeeded, you'll note the succeeded text. You will go and open up the file location. So for me, samples, player data storage, double click on the binary folder, win64, debug dx, and you will see this new player data storage application. Double click on that. And you can now sign into your Epic Games account. So click on account portal and click login. You will be prompted with this unverified application warning. Click continue to app and allow. Um, from here, you can open back up this stats or this, um, this test here. And you will see that you are now assigned into your account. And you can test this out, like try uh, making a new file and then you can save it. And then now you can download it. So this is how you get each sample to work. You'll have to input the same information for each sample. Um, so if you wanted to run something like P2P, you will have to open up sample constants and copy and paste all the data you have here. And you will have to build, sign in, and you'll open up the binaries folder, Win64, debug DX, and it, when you run that application, everything should work. So I encourage you to test around these applications a little bit and possibly dive into their source if you have time. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this tutorial series and I will see you next episode. Oh, and another thing to note is that I have opened up a Discord server because I know there will be a lot of questions on this particular subject. So if you want to join the Discord server, please click on the link down below. Bye. Bye. Bye.